What's up guys, we're back with another one. There were some great fights over the weekend in Miami, so I wanna give you my recap and my take of UFC 299. Cracking off the main card for UFC 299 was my teammate Song Yadong against Peter Yan. Man, I, I, I felt that Song was ready to go out there and show the world how good he is and, and get the job done against a former world champion. Um, the first round started off great. He was landing the, the more significant strikes. I feel like he was putting Yan on his heels and he definitely came out on top on the first round. In the second round, both the guys came out, they were trading back and forth. And I was thinking, oh man, this is a, a really close round. Peter Yan, he, he landed some slick takedowns. Uh, Song worked back up, but then he finished the round on top. I feel just, just the way judges score things, sometimes you don't know how they're scoring. And it's hard with judging because I feel like takedowns score major points in the judge's eyes. Uh, so I, I feel like it was 1-1 going into the third round. And in the third round they came out, it was back and forth. And uh, I was like, man, I think Song's gonna pull this off. But then Jan, he, he got another takedown and he kind of finished the round on top. And going back to what I said before, I just feel like it, it makes such a big impact in the judge's eyes. I was hoping Song could somehow get a split decision, of course, but you know, I, I, I did feel like it was two to one leaning towards Peter Jan. Uh, but it just goes to show that Song is right there in the mix. He lost to a former world champion. He lost to a guy that has only fought the best of the best in the division. So I feel like skill-wise, Song is right there. He's so young. He has so much experience on his side. Uh, so I do see a bright, bright future ahead of him. For Peter Yan, since he is ranked number four, the only person really in front of him is Corey Sanhagen at number three. I feel like they should fight each other for a number one contender spot. And then the winner gets the next title shot between O'Malley and Marab. All right, the second fight was between Burns and Madalena. This is a fight I was really excited for. I thought it was a traditional grappler versus striker, even though Gilbert Burns is a, a true veteran of the sport and he, he's really well-rounded. Um, it seemed like Madalena came out early. He found his range. He was landing some powerful strikes with his, his jab and his right hand, but early on, Burns was able to take him down and even take his back at one point. And, and I feel like this is a position that you do not want Gilbert Burns on your back in a fight. But Madalena did really well and he was able to stay calm and composed and work back to his feet. And, and this happened over the course of the first and second round. So I, I really thought that it was 2-0 going into the third round. And I think Gilbert Burns landed you know, seven takedowns where Madalena didn't have any takedowns. So he had a lot of control over the course of the first few rounds. And going into the third round, he was getting the better of him. And I felt that Madalena needed a knockout to win. So once he worked back up to his feet, he threw everything he had into that knee and it, it connected perfect, which really hurt Burns. And then he was able to follow up and just finish him with some hard ground and pound and, and brutal, brutal elbows to get the job done with only a few minutes left. So with Madalena being ranked number 11, uh, before fighting Gilbert Burns, who was his biggest step up in competition at number four, he went out there and, and put on an impressive performance and was able to put away a former title challenger. So I believe he's gonna have a number five or a number four next to his name when the rankings come out. He's riding this momentum that I feel they're gonna give him a, a very tough guy, maybe someone in the top three. And if he can go out there and perform the way he did against Burns, I feel like he should be uh, fighting for a title here in the near future. And the third fight was between MVP and Kevin Holland. And this is a fight I was super excited for before the fight. Man, I, I thought it was just gonna be a striking clinic and it was gonna be extremely entertaining. And, and, and I just don't feel like it was. I, I don't feel that it, it lived up to the hype. I, I know MVP is, He's a well-rounded world champion in kickboxing. He came from Bellator. And so I feel like the, the ceiling was extremely high and, and people were really excited like I was for this fight. But uh, after they, they started fighting, it was 
just like a kind of a lackluster fight. I, I don't know if you know something was going on with uh, MVP or maybe he had a, a ton of nerves and he felt like he had to deliver. It, it just wasn't as sharp either. I, I just thought it was the performance didn't live up to the hype, uh, which I thought it was going to. But in the end, I did feel like MVP did enough to get the job done. Um, I, I thought it was two to one. I feel Kevin Holland should have tried to take him down because I feel MVP is at his weakest when he's on his back. Uh, Kevin Holland has great jujitsu, ground and pound. I, I, I don't know what's next for MVP. I, I do think a great matchup from a, a striking standpoint because they have similar styles would be him against Wonderboy. Uh, but other than that, I don't know who he's gonna beat in the top 10. All right, in the co-main event, it was between Dustin the Diamond Poirier versus Benoit Saint-Denis. And, and this is a fight where a lot of people were really hyping up Saint-Denis. And he, he is a great fighter. I know later on he came out saying that he was on antibiotics, he didn't have the best performance, um, he had a hard weight cut. And I was even seeing throughout fight week, um, he, he actually had a big scab on his forehead and people were speculating that he possibly had some type of staff or MRSA and and that's exactly what he did have but still I was going with Dustin Poirier just because he's a veteran he's fought the best of the best he's fought former world champions and and he's just a dog you know and and even fighters you know myself I, I, I'm a fan of Dustin Poirier and I thought he would get the job done and, and he went out there and the first round was tough you know Saint Denis came out hard. He was throwing hard shots. He even showed some some slick grappling on the ground. You know, he had his back. He had him in bad positions. But Dustin Poirier, being the veteran that he is, he stayed calm. He just kind of waited until he had the opportunity to kind of explode out of those bad positions and work back to his feet. In the second round, Poirier came out and he was finally starting to land his shots. And he he was landing some hard hard punches where he uh, he finally shut the lights out with his right hook and then he followed up with a violent punch to finish off St. Denis. Also he's never lost two fights in a row and so his back was up against the cage he had to go out there and perform and, and he did just that. They were saying if Dustin goes out there and gets the job done he will be next in line and he went out there and put on a, a spectacular performance so uh, I want to see Poye and Islam in the summertime fight for the lightweight title. And in the main event was O'Malley versus Vera 2. Uh, I think a lot of people have been anticipating this fight for, for quite some time since the last time they actually fought. You know, I, I thought O'Malley would probably get the job done just because I was looking at previous fights that Cheeto had, uh, even the one with Sanhagen. And, and I feel that Sanhagen and O'Malley have very similar body types and, and kind of like fighting styles you know they're, they're both tall have long reach they have great footwork but cheeto is and he's a dog he's always in your face you can never count out cheeto vera after the weekend he got x-rays and, and he had a huge facial fracture so you know i, I wish him all the best in his uh in his healing it, it just goes to show how how tough that guy is he was he was in the fight until the the very last round they fought 25 minutes and he was still trying to finish O'Malley every single strike he threw but I, I, I do feel that O'Malley just kind of edged out each round and you know won a, a unanimous decision but it, it was a super exciting fight so what's next for O'Malley um, man I guess we're just kind of have to, to wait and find out but I could see a few different things playing out I know Marab was next in line for the title shot so rightfully so um, I think he's earned it I, I think they will eventually fight but O'Malley did call out Ilya Teporia and from a business standpoint I, I get where he's coming from there's only a few people in the history of the UFC that have been able to achieve a, a champ champ status or, or winning two belts in two different uh, weight classes. And, and not to say that O'Malley cannot win that fight, anything can happen in the fight. But I do feel that, you know, going up a weight class, it's, it's a different beast, you know. The strength, the power, it, it really does matter. 
if he goes up to fight Ilya, the lead up to that fight will be entertaining. It's a win-win. The UFC is going to get paid. Both fighters are going to get paid. If O'Malley goes out there and loses, his stock still rises and he can come back to the, his division and then fight Marab and cash in again. So, you know, I, I don't blame the guy for doing something like that. And he's just going to become an even bigger star than he already is. All right, so for UFC 299, the new segment we introduced didn't go our way, but we did go four and one on the main card picks. So we're going to keep the ball rolling. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll catch you on the next one.